Max Verstappen is Formula One champion, but is he really the best racing driver in the world? The winner of the 100 meters at the Olympics is the fastest person on the planet. Whoever wins Wimbledon is the best tennis player, and the winners of the World Cup have the best national team. But F1 is built different. No Hamilton fans, we are not going to be discussing Abu Dhabi. No, Michael, no, no, Michael, that was so not right. What we are talking about is the fact that Max Verstappen competed for his world title against a very small pool of talent. The barrier to entry in F1 is huge, and there is one simple reason for that. The money. Even Michael Schumacher once technically paid money to secure his seat in Formula One. As Lewis Hamilton says, Formula One has become a club for billionaire kids. Welcome to Athletic Interest. In this video, we will break down the true cost of Formula One and understand how the rise of so-called pay drivers could make it almost impossible for non-billionaires to enter the sport. A lot of the attraction people feel towards sports comes from knowing that those on the main stage have beaten millions of their fellow athletes to earn their chance. After all, many of you will have tried running, swimming or tennis at some point in your life, perhaps even at a competitive level and therefore understand the incredible amount of effort, dedication and skill required to complete these feats of athleticism. But how many of you have tried go-karting, let alone even touched a Formula One car? Only around 13,000 kids are actively competing at some level of go-karting in England. Meanwhile, 1.5 million children are involved in football. And that's just England, where competing in Formula One is a viable dream. Many nations across the world do not have the resources to develop a Formula One driver, but every nation on the planet has someone who can play football. On the current F1 grid, only eight drivers have arrived within the last five years. Every single one of them either has rich parents, large corporate sponsorship or the backing of one of the big teams. Some have all three. The cost of entry into professional sports is best viewed as a spectrum. On one end, we have sports like running, which need nothing more than perhaps some shoes to get started. Football, swimming and tennis have slightly higher costs due to equipment fees, but most people can start for a few euros. All of these sports get a lot more expensive when you start competing professionally, but none of them gets even close to Formula One. To get started in motorsport, you need a lot more than just shoes and a racket. You need a helmet, a cart, an engine, a mechanic, several sets of tires, gasoline, a track to train at and several tracks to travel to to do an average of 22 races a year. As a normal earner that's hardly possible anymore because already in the smallest kart class, we are talking about 8 years old, you have to reckon with 60 to 70 thousand euros. Even if you find enough money to graduate from karts, the road to F1 has some expensive tolls. The FIA proposes the following pathway. You start in Formula 4, a series of small-engined single-seaters, before being promoted through more powerful classes until you reach F1. The only problem is that the costs rise dramatically with each step, and most drivers need a few years in each category before they can graduate to the big stage. In fact, taking a kid from karting to F1 can cost at least 10 million. Very few people have that kind of money. But that doesn't mean it's impossible for less wealthy drivers to break through. F1 teams continuously scout the lower levels of motorsport for promising talent and will offer to sign them to an academy and pay their expenses. I haven't seen a very talented driver yet who hasn't made it into Formula One, no matter where he drives. If he is talented and wins races, then someone will take notice and support him. So problem solved, right? Formula One is a sport of equal opportunities. Well, not exactly. That quote assumes that you have the money to make it far enough into racing to get spotted by a big team. Lewis Hamilton started karting at the age of 8 and was picked up by the McLaren youth team at age 13. In that time, his family invested around 60,000 euros. His father was forced to work four jobs to cover the expenses. In his three seasons before entering the Red Bull Academy, Sebastian Vettel and his family toured the racetracks in a caravan and still spent around 40,000 euros. Anyone looking to attempt the same journey today will need to pay even more. Max Verstappen spent around 1 million euros before getting accepted into the Red Bull Junior program. Some of these expenses can be covered by sponsors, but no investment guarantees that you will make it into F1. These academies are notoriously competitive 
and never hesitate to throw away talent that underperforms for a few races. For those who don't wish to fight it out in the academies, there is a second option. The bank of mom and dad. These so-called pay drivers have gained their seats because their rich parents, or large corporate sponsors, invested money into the team. Landstroll's supporters would argue that he enjoyed a successful junior career before being selected to join F1. Stroll won multiple Canadian junior competitions and topped the driver's standings in both F4 and F3 before graduating to Williams. But Stroll's father provided his son with insane levels of financial support, far more than the 10 million spent over a normal pathway. From a young age, Lance Stroll had access to the best simulators, more track time and an entire team tailored to his needs. In Formula 4 and Formula 3, his father bought shares in the teams his son competed with. And when he moved to Formula 1, he invested in Williams. In total, Lance Stroll's pathway to F1 reportedly cost around 80 million euros. His father then purchased the Force India team for 90 million before picking up a stake in Aston Martin for 215 million euros. The same was true for Nikita Mazepin and is currently true for Nicolas Latifi. Even Lando Norris cannot escape scrutiny. Norris is not technically a pay driver, but the wealth of his family gave him better access to the resources that helped him become successful. While money helps in every sport, success in F1 seems to require an intricate balance between talent and tons of money. It has technically always been like this. When one of the Jordan drivers was arrested for a dispute with a taxi driver, Michael Schumacher's manager told Eddie Jordan to pick his rookie German as a replacement. Schumacher was not Jordan's first choice, so the manager lied about his experience at the upcoming spa circuit and his sponsor Mercedes agreed to pay £150,000 for a one-off drive. The rest is history. The incredible amount of money at play here is understandable. Formula One is an expensive sport. But it's one thing for a parent to invest tens of thousands to get their kid into karting before they are signed to an academy. After all, parents of swimming and tennis hopefuls pay a similar amount, but the modern standard seems to be that you either bring in lots of sponsorship money or your father buys the team. Under those circumstances, the talent pool is clearly restricted. The current drivers are not the best of the best, but rather the best of the billionaires. This is a trade-off. Teams are only really left with two options when developing talent. They can invest tens of millions on a promising driver and hope they become world champion, or keep the money and wait for a billionaire to come along with their child. Which one would you choose? While that may be a difficult decision, here's something that's a no-brainer. Signing up for our newsletter. Each week we send out a light-hearted breakdown of the most interesting stories from the business of sport, from serious think pieces to compilations of hilarious clips we found on social media. Make sure to check it out via the link in the description.